in some medieval castles, oubliettes could be found. These were holes in the ground which were tiny prison cells and where prisoners were locked inside of and simply forgotten. The oubliette was a terrifying form of physical and psychological torture and in some cases their reputation was a notorious one. In Warwick Castle there is an oubliette which even inspired fear in France during the 100 years war with French soldiers fearing capture as they may have ended up there. The oubliette saw prisoners left to rot with even rats and sewage found inside of the small tiny cell. However, during the Second World War, there were forms of these tiny prisons found inside some of the most terrible and despicable concentration camps. Dachau was a camp synonymous with punishment, fear and torture, and the guards often promoted a culture of barbarism, with public executions and beatings, often some were so severe that they would lead to death. Today we look at the Oubliette of Dachau, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Standing cells were special punishment cells, created to prevent a prisoner from moving in any position. They were stuck inside a standing position, for sometimes days on end, and this was a form of punishment which was incredibly brutal. Being forced to stand in one position for days on end, would promote immense pain, and the prisoner would not be able to crouch or sit down. The cells themselves were very small, and they were even used inside the Soviet Union, during the NKVD's torture of people during the Great Purge. These cells took inspiration from the medieval oubliettes that would do exactly the same, and sometimes they would be made more savage, with more than one person being held inside, with no toilet found there too. They were used by the Nazis in many different concentration camps, for example at Oranienburg, the SA camp commandant Werner Schaefer ordered that two should be built in the basement of the camp in 1933, at the start of Hitler's dictatorship. These particular cells forced a prisoner into a standing position, and one unfortunate prisoner named Newman was forced to stand constantly for 192 hours. The effect of his imprisonment was that he was driven mad, and to expand on this torture, prisoners were sometimes held in closets in a form of standing cell. At Auschwitz, inside the horrific punishment centre of Block 11, there were four standing cells, giving less than a metre square space, and four people were crammed inside them, being only able to stand. To make things worse, there was also only a two inch opening for air, meaning that they would become incredibly stuffy, and the air would be in short supply, making prisoners feel very ill. Some were forced into these for up to ten days, and one man stated how he was once held inside of one for six weeks straight, and that one prisoner was so hungry, he was forced to eat his own shoes, being only given three meals in six weeks. At Dachau, the standing cells inflicted a significant amount of fear. There was a brutal culture at the camp, specifically of terror and horror, with the guards inflicting severe punishment and evil onto the prisoners. It was opened on the 22nd of March 1933, and was intended initially to house political prisoners, but as the camp grew, it saw Jews, Romani and other people housed inside of it. Dachau was supported by 100 subcamps with different prisoners inside of them, and the guards in all aspects of the camp were violent towards the prisoners. Floggings and whippings in public were often done too to instigate a reign of terror. It was said of one incident, two prisoners who had stolen cigarettes were sentenced to 25 lashes, each with the whip. The two prisoners were led forward by their block leader. Two block leaders carried out the punishment. One prisoner uttered no sound. The other prisoner behaved differently, crying out at the very first stroke. When the man began to scream I went hot and cold all over. Even the beating of the first prisoner made me shudder. During early morning roll calls, prisoners were also forced to wait for a number of hours in tough and harsh punishment exercises. If someone had died inside of the night, their body would be brought to the roll call square, and they would be included in the numbers. It was horrific and the standing cells were part of this. The length of the stay inside of the cell was varied, and was up to the discretion of the Commandant of Dachau, and as to what the prisoner was being punished for. Prisoners were placed inside the Sterbunker for asking for a second helping of food, and others were placed here for simply picking an apple from a tree without permission of the guards. There are cases in which the standing cells were operated 
from three days up until six weeks, and as the number of prisoners increased in Dachau, the standing cells began to also be used more prominently. There was a small hatch on top for air in the cell, and a narrow door with an iron bar bolted across. There were two different types of standing cell used, and the one at Dachau was a type that favoured just housing one prisoner. The cell measured 29.5 inches by 31.5 inches across, and this was comparable to being stuck in a chimney chute for days on end. One prisoner of war, Max Hoffman, was housed inside the cell, and he said, It was a terrible state, and I thought it was over for me. Everything was so callous and distant for me. I couldn't lie down, could not crouch. The best was to stand, stand six days and six nights long. You touch the walls on both sides with your elbows. Your back touches the wall behind you. Your knee, the wall in front of you. There is no punishment of pre-trial detention. It is just torture. Straightforward, middle age is torture. I had bloodshot eyes, numb from bad air. I was just waiting for the end. The entrance to the cells at Dachau was by crawling. The door to the cell was around two feet square and was made from timber. Behind the door were metal bars and the prisoner had to get on their hands and knees and crawl into the standing cell and then stand up. Once standing, they could not move and had no room to manoeuvre. They were simply just stuck. The prisoner's back was pressed up against the wall and their knees would be touching the wall in front with their elbows wedged to the left and right. They were usually kept in this way for 72 hours and during this time the prisoner would have had to sleep standing up and if they were fed, they were only given bread and water, but many were not fed at all. This leads us on to the idea of the starvation cell, and if the crime was deemed serious enough by the commandant or Nazi officers, then they were sent into the standing cells, and many never came out alive, as they were systematically starved and dehydrated after they were given no food or water. Some prisoners were even placed on a shift in the standing cells, meaning they would be put in the stair bunker to sleep in at night, and then during the day they were forced out to do 10 hours of hard labour. This was used for a prisoner of war to then tell other prisoners of his ordeal, to deter them from also defying the rules of Dachau. One inmate of the standing cells, Johannes Neuhassler, was given just one single piece of bread during a rolling three-day stay there. On the fourth day he was taken from the cell, given a normal camp meal, and was then allowed to sleep on a wooden cot. However, he was then forced back into the cell to begin another three-day stay. One Czech prisoner, Radovan Drazan, was also forced to spend eight days non-stop without a break inside of the cell. Those prisoners who were sometimes allowed a break were cleaned down, as they had burns from their urine and feces, as they would have to go toilet where they were stood. Another man who was placed into the standing cell was Yurich Piskanov. Following the occupation of Ukraine by the Germans, he got a job at a railway station, but was arrested by the Gestapo for allegedly sabotaging German trains. He was then deported to concentration camps before being transferred to Dachau. At Dachau, he had to work outside of the camp, repairing the bombed-out railway tracks. One day he found a German newspaper, and he tried to smuggle it inside of the camp, as news from the outside was valuable to the prisoners. However, he was searched and the newspaper was found, and because of this he was sent to the standing cells. He was locked up inside and he said, It was dark, wherever I turned, I immediately came up against a wall. I could only sit a little by leaning my back against one of the walls, with my knee against the opposite wall. I was very frightened and did not know if I would come to live the next morning. It was damp and cold in the cell, this is how a day would pass. Then they began to mock me. When the food was brought, the SS officer tried to make me bark or grunt like a dog on all fours and scolded me, a filthy Russian pig. He always had his whip ready. If something did not please him, he would whip me immediately. All I could do was turn to the Almighty so that he would take my soul and save it from these torments. Yurich was held for ten days, constantly inside of the standing cells, and he was then released into the regular barracks at Dachau. The following day he spat blood, and he had contracted TB. However, he recovered and lived out the war. The standing cells at Dachau instilled so much fear during the time of the concentration camp, and they were a brutal torture method, which contributed to the horrors of the camp. 
They are inspired by medieval torture methods, such as the oubliette, and this was used by the Nazis for brutality, horror and savagery. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.